During the chaos of World War II, some of the most dangerous missions weren't fought with rifles or tanks, but with deception, intelligence, and survival skill. Deep behind enemy lines, Allied spies and undercover agents risked capture and execution every time they stepped out in disguise. But, you know, few people realized that one of their greatest tools for staying alive wasn't a weapon at all. It was a belt. Not a standard-issue uniform belt, but a hidden survival system packed with micro-tools, currency, and escape gear so clever that modern intelligence operatives still study its design today. For those fascinated by wartime ingenuity and survival tactics, the story of the spy's belt is more than history. It's it is a master in an stein sonnen than a live The spy's belt was a self-contained lifeline for agents trapped behind enemy lines. The belts were born out of necessity. When agents parachuted into Nazi-occupied Europe or infiltrated through neutral borders, they carried almost nothing that could give away their mission. Standard survival kits were just too bulky. Radio gear was often destroyed upon capture. So the British Special Operations Executive and the American Office of Strategic Services designed a hidden survival system so discreet that even a body search might miss it. Inside the belt's leather lining, craftsmen stitched compartments that held everything an operative might need to escape capture and blend into local populations. These included thin saw wires strong enough to cut through handcuffs or wooden beams, silk maps printed with regional details and invisible ink markings, and miniature compasses hidden inside buttons or belt buckles. Some belts concealed gold sovereigns or Swiss coins, which served as universal currency in occupied territories. Others carried morphine ampules, not for recreation, but to dull pain during escape or interrogation. Everything was engineered to be silent, durable and undetectable by casual inspection. This was micro-engineering decades before modern everyday carry culture. The belts represented the perfect blend of survival strategy and disguise, reducing a full escape kit into something you could literally wear unnoticed. Each hidden item served a specific purpose in the psychology of escape. The saw wire, coiled flat like a thread, could cut through metal in under ten minutes if handled carefully. The silk maps didn't crinkle or tear when wet, and they folded into the palm of a hand. Even the gold coins had a purpose beyond value. They bought silence, food, or a guide from locals who distrusted strangers. This layered design also had a psychological effect. A captured agent who knew he still had tools hidden on his person was less likely to panic. Many post-war debriefs mention how agents gained renewed confidence just remembering that their belt held options. That confidence could be the difference between freezing in fear and taking action. For survivalists today, this principle remains relevant. A compact, discrete kit is only half the equation. The other half is mindset. Knowing you're prepared keeps your mind sharp in crisis. Modern preppers and travellers can apply this concept by assembling a minimalist kit that fits inside a belt, boot or jacket seam. Items like a razor blade, small ferro rod, folded cash or tiny compass can make the difference between dependence and resilience when systems fail. 
After the war, both Western and Soviet intelligence services adopted similar compact escape gear. The early Cold War era saw belts and even shoe heels with hidden cavities designed to hold microfilm, lockpicks and currency. By the 1950s, some downed pilot survival kits included versions of these spy belts integrating compact fishing lines, wire saws and signalling mirrors directly into flight gear. The reason was simple. Space efficiency. In a real survival situation, whether in a cockpit, trench or border crossing, carrying less is safer. WP spies demonstrated that the most valuable gear isn't always visible, and that true survival often depends on creativity more than equipment. For modern adventurers, campers or off-grid travellers, this principle applies perfectly. One can adapt the concept by integrating small essentials into wearable gear, a paracord bracelet holding fishing line and hooks, a belt buckle with a concealed knife, or a keychain with tinder hidden inside. These are direct descendants of the Dobwistu spy's belt philosophy, survival through innovation and concealment. The SOE didn't just rely on clever design, they relied on clever materials. Silk was used for maps not just because of its durability, but because it didn't rustle when unfolded which could expose someone hiding nearby. The morphine ampules were wrapped in waxed cotton to stay waterproof and prevent breakage. Even the gold coins were carefully chosen for purity and recognisability in black market exchanges. The story of the W. Spies Belt isn't just about clever gadgets. It's about human adaptability. These operatives weren't superheroes. They were ordinary people trained to survive extraordinary conditions. Their success proved that survival isn't about owning the most gear. It's about designing tools that serve multiple functions, that hide in plain sight, and that give you control when all else fails. Today, whether travelling through remote terrain or simply wanting to stay prepared for emergencies, the same philosophy applies. Build redundancy into everyday items. Choose durable materials. Prioritise mobility over weight. Like the WW2 agents who relied on those hidden belts, you can turn the most ordinary gear into a silent lifeline. For those who respect history's forgotten innovations and value real survival wisdom, the WW2 spy's belt remains one of the greatest lessons ever engineered, proof that sometimes the best survival tools are the ones no one can see. If you enjoyed uncovering this forgotten piece of wartime ingenuity, subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video with fellow history enthusiasts. There's more buried technology, forgotten fieldcraft, and lost survival knowledge waiting to be rediscovered.